Hey Kelly, how you doing? Okay, I've got your submission post up here. Good job on your written rationale. Good uh, kind of a recap, you know, a little summary of what, what the story is and then the reasoning behind the choices that you made. So that's great. Type specimen sheet, I think it's a good start, but there's a couple of things that we need to look at here. And I think that the main thing is this, is, is really to understand the intent of a type specimen sheet. Basically a type specimen sheet is used to present the typeface um, with the intent of it being purchased or somehow procured for, for use in design projects. Um, so basically what you're doing is you're showing the typeface, you're, you're, you're showing its readability, its legibility, you're showing the letter forms, you're showing its clarity and its versatility with the intent of another designer looking at it saying, hey, I can use this in, in one area or another, I can use this for a particular project. And I, I think that's that's to a high degree. It's it's really determines the success of a of a, a, a specimen sheet is is how attractive the type uh, looks to the viewer. Okay. So that said, I think in, in terms of general composition and in terms of that uh, utilitarian use of the uh, uh, specimen sheet, there's some comments here, and I think that there's some things that, that, that point to areas um, that could use improvement. The first is the composition itself. Right now, you're not using negative space at all. I mean, you've got everything pushed to the, to the corners and the boundaries of the, the design, and there's just really, it's, it's almost daunting to look at it. It almost looks like it's work. And that's the reason for white space is to give the viewer kind of a visual resting point um, to, to, for two things. Number one, to make the composition look more inviting, and B, to actually provide that, that uh, a rest, some visual rest for tired eyes when it's going through this type of a, a composition where there's a lot of information. So we really, really want to expeditiously use white space in this piece. The, the next thing in two areas we're showing, the typeface itself is, is being obstructed by something else. Right here, placing this box over the uppercase letter forms, I think is a mistake because right now the viewer doesn't know what any of the letters behind here looks like. And that's a problem. My recommendation would be not to present the uppercase letters twice, present them once, and then bring this out of the box, right align it, and watch your margins, right? You're right up to your margins. I'd like to see a little breathing room in, the, in those margins. But so then just write a line, the, this size too, it doesn't have to be any bigger than this. And you can just take this and write a line it right here. So we got some nice negative space coming around through here between the up, uh, uppercase and lowercase to the right side of the up, uh, lowercase and then to the bottom of the lowercase. You've also got this numeric um, character set that's got a, a seemingly a white background and that is placed over the baseline of the last line of the alphabet so you're cut you're cutting off the serifs there and impeding the visibility there again i think that's a mistake um, because don't forget you want the viewer to be able to see how they can use the typeface my final suggestion is somehow in here i recommend that you fill in you you you, you place some some words in here they can be randomly generated words they can have to do with phantom of the opera um, you can use words like mystery or intrigue or opera house or things like that. But what we want to do is we want to see the typeface in live action, uh, typesetting real words. So again, we get a good idea of the versatility and the readability and legibility of the typeface. So I would recommend that you go ahead and do that. Use when you're, you're, you're creating your, your uh, letters, I'm sorry, your words, your keywords, um, go ahead and uh, um, use combinations of all cap uh, title case with the first letter capitalized and then lowercase um, and combinations there. And I think that's, that's a great way to show versatility of the typeface itself. So those are my recommendations moving forward. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be glad to address, but it's a good start. I just think that if we address those, those um, issues that I've mentioned in the last four minutes and 40 seconds. I think we're really, really going to push this. The typeface itself is, is really gorgeous. I'm still, I, I'm still not feeling the lowercase F, no, lowercase K. I've been mentioning that a few times now, but I, I just don't think those are, 
harmonious fits with the rest of the typeface. So, um, all right, so good job. Any questions at all, please let me know. Thank you.